men's skin, no humor, pansies. You tell them an icebreaker or two about women's libbers, gays, environmentalists, several minorities, the homeless, couple of religions, anorexics, obese people, the handicapped, old farts, baldness, and people who walk real goofy because they just had a vasectomy, and suddenly they get all sensitive, like I'd offended one of them or something. Aw, oh, duck, it's fuck man. Aw, oh, fuck, it's dick man. Duck, fuck, it's motherfucking duck man. What the fuck is this show? Well, I knew this thing existed, but I never actually watched this until it was requested to me by Sammy for the Patreon review raffle. But before I explain, Duckman, think back to 1994. I remember that era as if I was two years old, which I was, so I don't remember at all. But The Simpsons was obviously still going strong, while for the longest time onward, me and a bunch of other kids were not allowed to watch it. Despite it being a family show with merchandise intended for children, The Simpsons was considered edgy and pushing boundaries. Kids couldn't watch it, and Bart t-shirts were banned from schools. I'm a pretty bad kid. Really? What's the worst thing you've ever done? I stole the head off a statue once. Wow, that's pretty hardcore. Jeez. The only way I could watch The Simpsons is if I went to my cousin's house, who lives six hours away through car in frickin' Tampico, Mexico, and watched The Simpsons in Spanish. Often said to be the superior version. ¿Cómo estuvo tu junta, muchacho? Te enseñaron a cantarle a los arbolitos y a construir muebles inútiles con troncos de madera. ¿Eh? Oh, oh, maldita justicia poética. Today, we can show so much worse on television. For any kids watching this, is The Simpsons still banned in your household, or do parents worry more about Family Guy and everything else on Adult Swim? Sure, adult TV animation is pretty standard now, but in the early 90s, there were slim pickings when South Park and Family Guy hadn't premiered yet. If The Simpsons was said to be boundary pushing, it's a good thing these parents never saw Duckman. I don't get it. I'd break for animals if they're big enough to dent my car. I don't pop any zits above the eye line. I treat others the way I'd like to be treated. Save you, sister! Devote a lifetime to the church. I think they own the road. A foul mouth, womanizing, heavy drinking burnout. Duckman so hardcore he makes OJ Simpson look like Ashley Simpson. He's despicable and it doesn't help the world around him is as dysfunctional as a Grand Theft Auto radio commercial. This is one of those cynical, everyone's an idiot except for me cartoons full of bitter social commentary. Well, we're certainly tolerant of all points of view. Make a move and you're dead meat. This is straight up an adult show pertaining to those types of issues. The IRS, fear of technology, smoking habits, and one of my more relatable smaller moments for my paranoia, doctors who want to charge you for tests you probably don't need. Actually, your head is fine, but we discovered you had comprehensive health insurance, so we ran hundreds of expensive tests to see what else we could come up with. The good news is, you don't have a yeast infection. <laughs> oh, yeah. There's two sides to Duckman, Family Man and Private Dick. Dick means detective, by the way. As an excuse to take the story anywhere, Duckman is a duck detective. Duck detective. Taking whatever case he can get. His partner in crime, fighting, is Cornfed. He's basically the Kano to the Green Hornet, the lower ranking partner who just knows everything and speaks in a monotone voice. Easy, Duckman. I know over 200 ways to kill a man. You could go and open jar of rats to his face, then blowtorch the other side of the jar so the rats have to eat their way out through his face. 201. They also have these stuffed animal secretaries who often seem to be everyone's favorite punching bag, Fluffy and Uranus. I'm really bummed they never made any plushies out of these two. What the hell are you staring at? We think you've been a naughty detective. You've been smoking again. There are these Care Bear looking turds who care way too much. The best thing about them is Duckman can mutilate them all sorts of ways, but they'll regenerate. <gasps> I think the Happy Tree friends owe Duckman a check. They're also meant to represent Duckman's hatred of joy and or political correctness. I'm not talking like old man too afraid to admit he's a horrible person, wondering why he's not allowed to say racial slurs or dehumanize a group of people, questioning why civil rights are even a thing, asking, why is everyone gonna be PC all of a sudden? I'm talking like government regulated foods, cartoons are only good if the moral is good, don't openly show you're proud of your culture or race or gender or religion or whatever. 
ignore it, never bring it up, no prayer in school. I don't see you as Mexican, I see you as equal, as if being Mexican is wrong. Go for the popular opinion, put Bleach over Cowboy Bebop in your top 10 anime list, remain in your lane, removing that tiny thing about slavery from textbooks and Huckleberry Finn, Resident Evil 5 is racist without acknowledging the context of the setting, changing the guns to walkie-talkies and E.T., never challenge the audience, give it the Hollywood ending, let's ignore our history of World War II cartoons rather than learn what made them wrong, treat differences like they're bad, don't embrace your different, everyone needs to be the same rather than embracing difference and respecting difference, everybody gets a trophy, Brad Bird is the devil, why does this character have to be gay, why can't he keep to themselves? Misusing Happy Holidays to never mention religion rather than using Happy Holidays since Merry Christmas, Happy Hanukkah, Happy Kwanzaa, Happy Boxing Day takes too long. That type of PC, you know what I'm saying? Well, something like that. That's what Fluffy and Uranus are sort of like. They're a PC shit. Suppose you're the chairman of a large... <laughs> chairperson. Suppose you're the chairperson of a large corporation that makes meat on a stick. Oh, Mr. Duckman, we couldn't support the killing of animals for food, nor the senseless slaughter of trees for sticks. Okay. It's a common theme within the show, such as in episode 13, where Duckman has headed up to here with the world rejecting his type of dark humor. But it's precisely when humor is offensive that we need it most. Comedy should provoke. It should blast through prejudices, challenge preconceptions. Comedy should always leave you different than when it found you. I see a lot of people use this as an excuse for shock humor, like some hack job Family Guy writer. But there's more to it than that. Duckman saying how comedy can be used to send a message that not everyone will agree with or ever thought about before. Anyone can make a joke where the punchline or parody of it is just, hey, look at that. Ain't that dumb? But it's a whole new level when you can make a satirical statement that can change the way you look at a topic or challenge what was your opinion on something beforehand. Even if you don't agree with said opinion, you can understand their perspective. Thus, you can form an argument around that perspective and continue to argue together because you assholes are too high off your cocks to admit either of you lost an argument or grow as a person. It should blast through prejudices, challenge preconceptions. Comedy should always leave you different than when it found you. Now, I may be over thinking it, but I got one problem with the speech. This message could apply to dark humor. The common defense of dark humor against people who don't like it is acknowledging humor is subjective and everyone's got their preference. While in the context of the actual episode, Duckman's speech is instigated because people were laughing at things he doesn't find funny, which is humor that wasn't vulgar. There's no law against someone being funny. Maybe he's just got something new or special or different about his humor. It's clean! Clean? I can't let a low-down scum like that put you guys out of work! The only reason why people in this episode had a different preference in humor within the story is just because they're being manipulated by a magic serum making the joke teller likable. <laughs> So Duckman preaches to them what they're laughing at beforehand is inferior to his sense of humor. The irony. Well, at least that's my interpretation. I know you all came here to see Iggy Catalpa because you think he's funny, because you like his style, because you're just plain like him, right? Yeah! But you just think you do, because you are manipulated into thinking you do. You know, Duckman, I don't like sitcoms, but I don't see myself as the messiah because I don't find the bing bong theory and JoJo's Bazinga adventure funny. Ooh, look at me. I'm Duckman. I'm cynical, so that means I'm deep. I don't believe in Peter Pan, Frankenstein, or Superman, and I don't listen to current pop music. You say Justin Bieber, I say Metal Leica. Melanie Martinez, more like diaper fetish Martinez. Alleged diaper fetish, alleged, alleged. Shh. I've talked about Duckman's career, but the heart of the show is his home life. He's a recently widowed father living with his two, three heads of kids, sister-in-law and grandma. His family does not respect him. The head of the household is his sister-in-law, Bernice. She's always there to put Duckman in his place and make sure he's not doing anything wrong. Remember, Duckman, everything you think, say, and do is bad for the children. So if you have to speak to them, just repeat something you've heard me say. Those two may or may not have some sort of romantic relationship going on. Sister-in-law. Morally. I'm not sure to what to say that. Let's just make like R.L. Stein's The Haunting Hour and don't think about it. 
Duckman is also left with his kids, the hyper-intelligent twins Charles and Mumbo, who often debate amongst themselves smart shit no one cares about. No way! Muhammad would definitely beat Moses in celebrity word scrambles. Would not! Moses wrote the Torah! It has over 50,000 words! So what? They're all in Hebrew! Those words still look scrambled! Moses! Muhammad! Moses! Oh, uh, oh. You got two bickering twins and one fitness-loving, sort of feminist woman. Does Phil, Lil, and their mom, Betty, from the Rugrats ring a bell for anyone else? It's from the same animation studio. Up next, a few more laughs at other people's expense. Midget throwing. Moving on. Wait, they throw him? Dad, we're 10 years old. I don't think our still-developing psyche should be exposed to someone like him. The third child is Ajax Sakari, the dumb slacker son who reminds me a lot of Chris Griffin from Family Person. Ow. 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 Step away from the door, son, then pull. Thanks, Don. You know, I think I might be ready to tackle that whole right and left thing next. He's voiced by Dweezil Zappa, the son of musician Frank Zappa, who they often use music for in Season 1 and what you've been hearing throughout this video. You younger viewers may be asking, who's Frank Zappa? Well, ask your parents, kids. Musical knowledge is not my thing. Oh, and there's also Duckman's comatose grandma who communicates through farts and only farts. Happy be good to the elderly day, grandmama! <gasps> yeah, nice what the fuck? Each one of them is dysfunctional in their own way, yet Duckman is the lowest in the family totem pole. <gasps> His entire household just ignores, belittles, flat out does not respect him. He lives a miserable life dealing with them and still getting over the loss of his wife. It's a cruel show with its share of sympathetic moments when he begins to connect with his family. Duckman's a down and out character who holds out for the world to get better. If not for him, at least for his kids. I guess I've had my share of bad luck and bad relationships. Heck, I got suits pending against me from three different dating services and the teen chat line. There have even been times when I've wanted to give up, but... If I do, how can I expect things to ever get better? What kind of world would I be leaving for my kids? Duckman seems like a cartoon full of bitterness without any substance, but this is one that surprised me. I came here to laugh. I didn't know I was going to cry too. Switch on to Adult Swim or Comedy Central. There's plenty of cynical jerk characters today spouting snarky commentary that really could be interchangeable between all of them. That's just the starting template to that type of character. What really matters is how much we get to know or develop them further. What keeps them going? What made them this way? How do they stay in touch with the people they're jerks to? Great characterization like this is why I consider Duckman the 90s Bojack Horseman. Maybe I'm feeling oversaturated in jerk characters today, but in 1994, having such despicable animated protagonists was still a new thing when, once again, The Simpsons, a much tamer show, had such a backlash for their less-than-spotless characters. But just because a character isn't morally upright doesn't mean we can't still latch onto them and their problems. I don't have a cow, Dad. The sad truth is, all families are like us. And The Simpsons, even Bart, are not necessarily a bad influence on kids, according to some psychologists. This is something that they can grab onto and identify with. Um, if Bart's having problems and making it and doing okay, maybe I can make it and do all right, too. By looking at this show, you probably figured out by now this was done by Klasky Chupo, the animation studio behind Rugrats, Rocket Power, Wild Thornberries, etc. Either you're disgusted by the style or appreciate the surrealness. Some of the backdrops have got a nice bit of shading to them, and Duckman takes place in a world populated by either humans, animals, or human animal hybrids. A lot of them just look god awful. Jesus Christ! We've been celibate for a year, and we need you to go out with us. It's such a twisted looking show, and almost as terrifying as Rugrats. Almost. 
It's an acquired taste, which is a fancy way of saying it looks like shit, but I like it. Even the intro manages to replicate the messiness of the comic book covers. Yeah, Dugman originated as a comic book created by Everett Peck, known for his illustrations in magazines such as Time, Playboy, and The New Yorker. He also created Squirrel Boy on Cartoon Network. Yeah, that was a thing. I never watched Squirrel Boy. That aired during my 90s kid phase where I hated every modern cartoon at the time. So I seldom ever got past the intro, which the intro theme is just people screaming, Rodney! 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 Like some poor man is trapped 127 hour style in the cleavage of a cliff, praying like hell for this ugly ass squirrel to save him, but the stupid squirrel chooses to ignore his cries. You can't hide from your guilt, squirrel boy. Why be a squirrel boy when you can be a duck man? Oh, some apples. So back on Duckman style, if you're wondering why his glasses are kind of floating there with no eyes behind them, the glasses are his eyes. It's not just a one-time visual gag. That's how his body functions. <laughs> Vocally, Eric Duckman is played by the fat man from Seinfeld, who isn't Wayne Knight, Jason Alexander. Roll a clip from that one classic episode of Seinfeld. 50 years ago, you had you upside down with a fucking fork up your ass! Whoops, <laughs> oh, that's the wrong actor. You know, before the show aired, Alexander admitted he thought he was auditioning for a character that would appear in a single episode in an already existing cartoon. He didn't even know the name to the cartoon while auditioning. And when I auditioned for it, I thought it was a one-shot thing. I thought it was a, a one-er, not a series. So I created this voice. Yeah, what the hell? You know, this very... Going, well, I can do that for a day. And then I had to do it for four years. Um, it was tough. It was, yeah, I, I came very close to doing some damage in there. Though the good thing is, he did grow to appreciate the show when he actually got the job, and he made Duckman who he is. The show was written around his voice. Unlike most animation, all the voice actors were in the same room when recording, adding to the snappy dialogue. But this does not apply to Corn Fed's actor, Greg Berger. Get this, while the show was recorded in California, Greg was busy filming a movie in Russia, so he recorded all his lines on a tape recorder in his hotel room while he's given direction over the phone. Probably wasn't much of a setback given the deadpan delivery. It appears they don't allow people of color in this community. Duckman has a dedicated flock of fans now, but the show was very much at the wrong place at the wrong time when it first aired on USA Network, a channel no one really cared about and had no other adult animated shows. Which is why Duckman had a short run of... 70 episodes? Four seasons? Come on! Fans of Duckman said this was short-lived. 70 episodes is not short-lived. Clerks had six episodes. It is the Fully Cooly of American animation. Oh wait, even Fully Cooly's getting more episodes? Oh fuck everything then. Four seasons is a great run. But then again, when I hear people compare this to South Park and Family Guy, who both currently have over 250 episodes and are far more popular yet came after, I can see where the desire for more would come from, especially on that weird-ass cliffhanger ending, to which the writer of the episode admitted he had no real conclusion in mind. If you're a fan of South Park and you watch Duckman, you go, oh my god, this is the bastard stepchild to, to South Park. I think it's kind of a blessing it was on a small channel like USA. A smaller channel means more creative freedom to be as crude as they could be on TV. And the USA Network kinda needed Duckman in terms of, hey, what else do we got to air? When, when does Bird Notice premiere? 13 years from now. Damn it, just put more money to that Darkwing Duck cartoon. We got nothing else. USA? Are they on at night? Are you kidding? Dozens of people watch USA. Eh, uh, yeah, I guess Duckman did deserve more episodes, but it lasted longer than other short-lived shows. It only ended after the USA Network just didn't want to fund the show anymore. Animation costs a lot of money and time. <laughs> For me, a person watching this show now in 2016, I'm actually more impressed with the historical animation significance than the actual show itself. So much of what Duckman did reminds me of a bunch of other cartoons that came after. 
Dan Versus, F is for Family, Rick and Morty, South Park, Venture Brothers, Family Guy, and especially BoJack Horseman. I feel they owe a lot to Duckman. This was boundary pushing to the point where now, it's kind of standard. Dark humor, social commentary, assholeish characters who have a reason to be an asshole with some sympathetic moments hoping for their lives to improve. Duckman was one of the first for TV animation. I believe you presented Loretta with one of the quintessential paradoxes of the modern era. The idea that the most perfect world is an imperfect world, because imperfection creates the drive in people to make things better. The irony being that maybe the most perfect parent is actually an imperfect parent. That's me! Wait, wait, wait a minute. Are you saying I taught you something? I guess so. Don't tell anyone, okay? Let's see, we got your uh, Batman, your Superman, Aquaman, Underdog, Spider-Man. He wasn't a man. Ultraman, Underdog, Ice not Underman. Mr. Duckman, there's a USA executive on the line. He thinks this promo, um, sucks. Yeah? Well, you can tell him to kiss my feather. I'm the star here. The legacy continues. Duckman, premiering next Saturday night at 10.30 on USA. Now, back to Magnum P.I. on USA.